Hi guys, this is Thomas with another video. Uh, this time I'm going to explain to you or show you how to create a, uh, a library project. All right, uh, just to, yeah, let's go ahead and start this. Right click on, I'm going to continue where I left off with the previous video. Right click on the group and then pick add new project. Or you can do file, new, and we want a, where is it? Uh, oh, look at that. It's not even on here. Oh, interesting. Okay, it's not on this menu, but it's on other. And then click library here. Or I can right click on the group and then add new project and then library. Double click or click OK. And if you noticed, it's called mylibrary.lib. And um, all Visual Amazon really does is it creates the project type and then it creates a readme file for you. And this is just for informational purposes, uh, especially for somebody who hasn't created a library yet, uh, what a library is. I put some, I, I did put some text in here, describe it, what it is. Um, in, the, in the nutshell, you use libraries generally to uh, combine all your uh, assembly code, which has already been assembled. So it's not the source files. You could put the source file in it and Visual Amazon will assemble them and put them in the library. Uh, you can do that too. In fact, you can do it like this. I can add a new assembly here, which is empty. And you can just add your code in here. And then Visual Amazon will go ahead and assemble it and then use the object file, the assembled file, and put them into the final library itself. But in this case, I'm not going to write this here. I'm going to delete it. Back to the readme file. I'm just going to save the, the project. It should save it into my common project folder. Yes, it does. Save it. And it saves my readme file. In general, I would highly recommend leave the readme file in it. You can you can delete this and then um, describe what the library is all about, what kind of files are in there. You're probably going to end up having dozens of files in it, or maybe even hundreds if potentially. Um, what I do want to show you, you can add, like I said, you can either add a a new assembly file and start from scratch. Most likely, you will probably add maybe the object file itself from another project. For example, uh, let's see where's my DLL. Let's say I want, let's see where this dude is located. Uh, so this is in here, and I'm gonna, let's copy this path here. So I want to say I want to create a, uh, a library with an object file that has already been assembled from somewhere else. So I'm going to right click here, add. I want to paste the, the path in here. I'm going to pick, I'm going to grab the actual output. If you notice, this is the binary version of the assembly file. So assembly one.obj. I'm going to add this in here. If you noticed, the assembly file is added to the library. Uh, Visual Masm does have now a, a hex editor built in. You can modify any portions of a binary file and it, it will store, it will, it will update the file and then keep the changes in the library if you want to do that. I wouldn't recommend it. That you do it this way, of course. If you had the source file, you would do it there. But if you don't have the source file, you could add the object file in here without modifying anything, if you would know how to call it. So um, you can also add same thing like I did for a binary file, for the OBJ file. You could right click on it and then add another library file. Say, oh, this is interesting. Uh, I already have one here. I don't want to add itself, right? That would be kind of silly. Uh, let's go. Let's go to Masm32 to see what's in here. Let's go to the 
MASM32 library. Just, just to, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add, you can add any of these library files in here in this case. Uh, let's pick this one. Uh, so now I added, if you notice, the icon changed to a library icon. I have binary object file and another library file in my brand new library. So let's go save this. If I right click and assemble, it's not going to do anything because I don't, I don't have any assemble files in it. I mean, in any source files in it, right? But if I build it, it should create a final library with the binaries in it. Let's check it out. Yeah, it looks like it did it. It's about 13 kilobytes in size. If you noticed up here in the my, in the project manager, it's about 13k. Which is about right. I think the library file here was yeah, it is is twelve uh, k. Yeah, it it worked. So uh, let's check it out in the Windows Explorer to the release, and there it is, the combined library. Now, behind the scenes, Visual Masm uses the library manager from Microsoft to do all this, of course. You go to tools options and then file locations is this guy right here the library manager from microsoft and with this capability you can you can really create very large applications and um, you don't necessarily have to share the code but you want to share your your library conceptually uh, for example, what if you create a library for uh, uh, translating? Uh, say, say your application wants to communicate to to a REST web service and um, a REST-based web service, and the, the JSON payloads that you need to transmit on a socket communication, you want to uh, convert the HTTP uh, stream that you will get uh, as a text in this case, as a JSON, but you want to convert that JSON uh, into something that you can understand in your assembly application. So you need to be able to parse the uh, the JSON object. So you say you want to create a JSON parser, let's say, and the JSON parser has a bunch of functions in it and how it knows how to, the structure of a JSON file, what it looks like, the embedded objects, etc. And as you build this out, would be really cool to have a library that does all this it's called maybe json json library a json dot library and all the functionalities in here uh, your final output might be consisting of the the library that you've built with your source files in the library and then maybe another output could be a dll a Venus dll uh, called json dot dll <coughs> that you could use in your in your application right so as you can see, you can start building and modularizing your your code uh, to manage larger projects or applications that do more than just Hello World, right? And this is really one of my goals, as I explained in my other videos. Uh, so I need to be able to be able to manage these different types of uh, resources and artifacts of your applications. So the tools you have available on the Windows are, first of all, your your assembly source files, right? You can use Visual Masm to manage all this for you much more easily. And uh, with the project manager, it will be straightforward to handle large projects. The different types of projects you want to create um, and manage under a group conceptually. Grouping is very helpful, right? Because you can you can share these projects between different groups in the visual, with the Visual Masm, and um, if you do have a large project, it will consist of different types of projects. That's for sure. And so, libraries are a great tool set you can use to manage this for you. So keep that in mind. It's uh, it's really helpful. Let me close the hex editor here. By the way, you theoretically you can you can add a view. Uh, even executable files with Visual Masm. You can actually add them in here. Let's see, let's try this, just for fun. Uh, let's go, uh, where was this dude over here? The console one, yeah. 
Let's copy the path. And we want to add an executable. I know this doesn't make sense, right? So uh, this is just for fun. I want to go release executable here. Now I have the executable, but I can actually inspect and modify the executable within my vision mass. I'm just fine. How cool is that, right? Uh, anyways, this could be helpful if you don't have the source code available. You can actually do make simple hex editor modifications. Anyways, uh, but you probably don't want to include it in the library, which is just adding up space. So I'm going to just remove it. Don't delete it, but just remove it and save it. Uh, yeah, like so. Save the project group. Cool. It's all good now. All right, so that's a, a library project. I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.